Hey, what's going on guys? Welcome to a new video. So in this one then, I want to give you three really practical tips to help you guys go out and be successful at dropshipping. So anybody who's left a comment on one of my videos or DM me on Instagram or Facebook, you'll know that I get back to every single person. I'm quite an active person. Um, I talk to a lot of people then within a dropshipping community. And this really helps me out then when it comes to YouTube because I get to know a lot of people's failures, I get to know a lot of people's successes, and therefore it gives me ideas for videos I can put out that's going to pretty much just try and help as many people as possible. So that's what this video is based on. And these three tips then are kind of like the three most common things that are people struggling with right now. Now, before we jump into point number one though, I just want to quickly mention, as always then in every single video, I am giving away a free one-to-one -one consultation call with me. So if that's something that you might want to win, then all you have to do is simply leave a like on this video and leave a comment down below as well. And if you commented on my previous video, then just make sure you stay tuned to the end of this one where the winner will be announced. Now, I just want to quickly mention as well is that I am uploading a video or at least I plan to right now. Um, I'm uploading a video every single day in June and therefore I'll be giving away 30 free consultation calls just in June. And with that being said, then let's jump straight into point number one. So point number one then guys um, forgive me if I keep looking down I'm working from some notes on my phone just to make sure I don't forget to mention anything but anyway point number one is that don't pick products don't pick products based on your own judgment so if you're new at anything your judgment towards what a good product is going to be um, it's a skill basically. So if you're new to e-commerce, then you're not gonna be very good at picking what winning products are. Time and time again, I speak to people um, and we talk about different products and the reason don't they don't pick certain products is because they'll just simply look at it and think that's not a good product and it's not going to sell. But if you're new to e-com, you're new to marketing, especially on Facebook, then your skill and your ability to choose products that you think are going to sell really well isn't going to be very good. So you have to base your decisions as a beginner on evidence. So I'm just gonna give you a couple more points now um, in terms of where you can find that evidence and what kind of things you need to base that judgment on before you advertise a product. And just to kind of illustrate this in a real life situation, I'll put a screenshot up now of a particular product that when I first saw it, it I just completely glazed straight past it because I thought it's such an ugly product. There's no way anybody's going to buy that. But then it actually turned out to be one of my best sellers. And I'll put an image up now and I want you guys to leave a comment down below then to whether you think that would be a good product or not. So anyway, in terms of picking products, then what do you base your decision on when you see a product? You need stone cold evidence so that you know for a fact that it's actually selling correctly, not just based on your judgment, not so you've just looked at it and think, yeah, that's a good product, I'm gonna put a ton of ad spend into it. You need to base it on evidence. So there's a few different ways in which you can go about gathering that evidence. Number one, you can look at the total daily orders on AliExpress. So if you've got the dropshipping center um, on AliExpress, everybody has access to it. If you simply Google it, you can find a link that will take you directly to it where you activate it. And you can put a product URL then into the dropshipping center and it's going to tell you the daily orders for the past week and a sign then of a good solid strong product that's selling consistently is you want but somewhere around the kind of like three percent mark so if a product has a thousand total orders then a sign of a really strong selling product right now um, would be a product that has three percent of a thousand orders which works out at about 30 orders a day i think if i've done the math correctly and that's kind of like what you want to base your judgment on whatever products you come across look at the daily orders and if it's around that three percent mark and that shows there's a really strong demand for that product right now another thing you can do as well is find ads on facebook so go to the facebook ad library it's recently just been updated to be a hell of a lot more useful than it used to be in the past so make sure you check that out simple google search for it and you'll come straight across it and the other way is is simply to use the facebook search bar put the product in followed by get yours or buy here and you'll find a ton of different videos probably related to the exact same product and you want to go into the videos that have the most views look at the comments try and find the videos that have the most comments and look at what people are saying about the product is there good feedback about it is there bad feedback about it um, are people tagging 
their friends saying you need this? Are people saying they want it themselves? Are people even better? Are people even saying they have bought it and they like the products? Because again, there's stone cold evidence there that people are actually buying that product and it's in demand. And then the third and final way in which you can find evidence about a certain product is go to the exchangemarketplace.com where people sell their Shopify stores. Find Shopify stores that aren't private listings. So um, listings that actually show the URL of the store. Go to the store, use certain um, Chrome extensions like Commerce Inspector, go straight to their best sellers. And if a store then has over a million dollars in revenue and you go to their best sellers page, then look at the best selling products. They've all got to be really good products that are selling well and have a demand. And if their revenue, if they're still selling today, um, Shopify will give you this information, by the way, they'll tell you what their past revenue is month by month. And if they're still doing say 50 grand a month, 100 grand a month, and these are their best selling products, then the chances are there, uh, that's stone cold evidence that those products are selling really well right now. You can also go into their Facebook page as well. Look at the kind of posts. What products are they posting about? Which ones have the most views? If you go onto a Facebook page, then go to videos, it will tell you which one has the views as well. So whichever videos have the most views, then they're the ones that the, that the page is investing ad spend into and pushing. So they're going to be the ones that have that stone cold evidence. Again, you can look at the comments. There's loads and loads of different ways you can go about it. But I guess to kind of summarize point one is that don't look at the product and make a judgment on it on based on your own opinion. Um, make sure you look at the evidence. Number two then is a very, 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 very important point because it can save you hundreds, if not thousands and thousands of um, pounds or dollars, whatever you're advertising in basically. And that is get feedback on your store before you even spend a single penny on Facebook ads because it doesn't matter how good your ad or how good your product is. If you have a poor Shopify store, nobody's gonna buy your product. There is no point in the world in driving traffic to your store if it's not ready, if it doesn't look professional, if it's got dodgy color schemes, if it's got dodgy fonts, if it's got Chinese branding all over the place. Make sure you get as much feedback as possible on your store before you start driving traffic and trust me, it will save you a ton of money. And there's a few ways you can go um, about gathering this feedback then you can go into Facebook groups and as long as it's okay with the moderators the group that I run there's a link in the video description down below then people then feel free to post your store link in there and people are actually really active um, on average in fact you're looking at probably 10 different people giving you feedback to your store which is um, really valuable information it's going to help you improve your store and essentially save you money it's a free way that will 100% save you money if you have a poor store I can't emphasize this enough I see it so many times I've spoken to people who have spent hundreds of dollars on ads if not thousands and I look at their store and it just looks so amateurish there's actual spelling mistakes or layout issues or um, the other day I saw somebody's store and their main product image still had the Chinese logo um, watermarked on it and I just thought you've spent all this money on ads but as soon as somebody sees that it's going to put them off straight away you need to have a good decent looking professional and even more important trustworthy looking store I can't emphasize this enough get as much feedback as possible on your store so go into Facebook groups send your link to me I'm more than happy to spend a minute two minutes writing out a couple of points that you need to improve on your store um, for example get rid of the tax notes and product pages um, because I do get so many requests that I can't give you a ton of detail um, if you wanted to pay for a lot of people pay for 10 minute consultations but instead of actually speaking one-to-one -one, I'll just record like a video review of their store so if you want me to do that by all means um, but if you haven't got the money to spend on that then by all means just send me your store link and I'll give you one or two points to work on so yeah number two then is get feedback on your store before you start spending money on Facebook ads so once you've got some feedback on your store then and you're more than happy with it then you're gonna start marketing. You're gonna move into Facebook ads, which leads us on to point number three, which is keep it simple when it comes to Facebook. Facebook as a marketing platform is the best in my opinion, but it's probably also the most complicated as well. So when you're first starting out, you need to keep it as simple as possible. And I mean this in all respects as well. So number one, you need to structure your ad manager logically. 
the amount of people I've seen um, inside their ad manager accounts and they haven't named their ad sets, they haven't named their campaigns, they've got 50 different campaigns, 200 different ad sets, and they just can't keep track. There's just too much work for them to do. So you need to structure things logically to make sure that you can keep track of what's going on because a huge, huge, huge thing with Facebook ads is being able to make comparisons of the data and they need to be fair comparisons. So you can't, for example, then you can't compare a lookalike ad set against an interest-based ad set because they're two completely different audiences. You've got one that Facebook have created and then you've got one that you've created. So they need to be like for like comparisons. So you need to have a campaign per product, a campaign per type of audience. So if you're selling um, a mug, for instance, then you could have mug and then lookalike audiences have all your lookalike ad sets within that campaign. Therefore, you're only comparing lookalike audiences against other lookalike audiences. Therefore, you can make fair comparisons and you'll know what are good results for lookalike audiences because that's going to differ from interest tags. And so you have a different campaign then for it can be the same product, but it's going to be a campaign and the audiences then is going to be interest tags. And so you can compare those against each other when it comes to naming your ad sets as well. You have to name them. Um, logically to what the targeting is. So when it does, when you have got a list of 50 different ad sets, you don't have to go into it to know what you're targeting. So you can make those initial comparisons and spot the data. Time and time again, when people duplicate ad sets, they'll just leave it as the default name and it just says, um, the name of the base ad set plus copy. And if they've done this five or six times, it's just a ton of different ad sets. It's just really confusing and they just don't have a clue what that ad set is actually targeting or what the goal of it is or the reason they even duplicate it. So make sure that you actually name your ad sets to something that makes sense to you. Moving on then, make sure that you focus on one product at a time. Um, I spoke to somebody recently who was a beginner when it comes to Facebook ads and they were trying to advertise six different products at the same time. And even today now, um, within general stores, certainly I'll only ever focus on one product at a time. Even within niche stores, there's usually at a very most four, maybe even five products that I'm really pushing at that time to try and manage six different ones as a beginner um, not only will that require, require require a ton of money it's going to require a ton of attention as well so unless you've got like a significant amount of time to dedicate to looking over the numbers and focusing on one product at a time um, then you just buy enough more than you can choose so just keep it simple focus on one product at a time moving on to the next point then which is also quite important is that you don't need a ton of ad sets to make a lot of money um, there's loads and loads of reasons why you shouldn't be running a ton of different ad sets. Now, when it comes to testing, that's completely different. When you're trying to just make money, once you've done the testing, say, in fact, once you've done the testing and you've got those ad sets that are really performing well, then focus on scaling that handful of ad sets. Like even to this day, per product, I'll have three, maybe four, maybe even five really well performing ad sets. And the kind of strategy that I like to adopt is try and get an ad set up to 500 pound per day spend, and then just kind of consistently stay at around that for three, four, maybe even five ad sets. And if you can have that many ad sets with that kind of ad spend performing really well, then you'll probably make more money than you'll ever need to make um, without having to work for somebody else, if that makes sense. So just focus on those select few of ad sets for a number of reasons, really. Number one, it's gonna be less time managing. Number two, the more money and the more data that goes through an ad set, the better it's going to perform. And that kind of leads me into my next point as well, is that you need to dedicate whatever your budget is, you need to dedicate it wisely. Because if you don't, then you're just gonna pretty much just waste it and get absolutely nothing in return. So for example, then if you have 500 pound to dedicate to testing a specific product, then what you're better off doing is dedicating say 20% of that, so 100 pounds to testing say 20 different ad sets. To test an ad set, well I say test an ad set, it's actually testing an audience. To test an audience, you don't need to spend a significant amount because essentially what you're testing is that audience against another audience. So you can test 20 different audiences at $2 a day um, ad spend, look at which ones are performing the best, and then with the remaining $400 um, of budget, then you're better off dedicating that um, into two, maybe three ad sets. I've shown it before in a previous video, so I'm not gonna go into crazy amounts of detail, is that I'm in the dog niche and when you look at the ad sets as an overall and you look at the amount spent versus the ROAS versus the cost per click versus the CPM, then 
again, I've shown this in a previous video, you can clearly see that once an ad set gets to about $150 ad spend, then that's when the ad set starts to settle down, it starts to optimize, and it starts to produce efficient and consistent results. So if you've got that $500 ad spend as a budget, and you split that across 10 different ad sets, so $50 per day on each ad set or $50 just per ad set over whatever time, then you're not gonna give a single one of those ad sets enough time to optimize and bring those results. So essentially, you're spending the same amount of money, but you're gonna get absolutely nothing in return. So you're better off putting all of that budget into say two, maybe three ad sets. So each ad set is say spending $125 because then you're giving it more of a chance to optimize and actually start bringing in consistent sales. That's another thing that people ask me about. It's a common theme people ask me about is that um, my ad set got one sale this day, got two sales the next day, and then absolutely nothing for three days. And then the first question I ask them is, how much have you spent on that ad set? And very, very, very rarely, in fact, I don't think I've spoken to anybody yet who said that they've spent more than $100 on the ad set. And it's just not enough time. With Facebook, what do you, th you've got to, take Facebook back to essentially what it is. That's what people forget about. They just go blindly into Facebook ads, not even considering what it is they're doing. Facebook works on past data. If you've got an ad set that has $30 of ad spend versus an ad set that has $300 of ad spend, the one with $300 of ad spend is gonna have a ton more data compared to the other one. Therefore, it's gonna perform more consistently and more efficiently. So you have to give ad sets time and you have to give them budget to spend. And that being said then guys, that concludes all the notes I wanted to go through in this video. Um, if you're still watching, then thank you very much. I really appreciate everybody who watches these videos all the way through, because it really helps grow the channel. We're fast approaching 6,000 subs, which is just crazy. So thank you very much to everybody who's watching. Um, and if you did enjoy the video, if you did find that one golden nugget that you didn't know or that you really think is going to help you, then make sure you leave a comment down below um, just to let me know, basically. And with that being said then guys, if you're still watching, um, I'm assuming you enjoyed the video. If you did, then please do make sure you leave um, a like. And if you wanna be entered into that raffle for the one-to-one -one call, then of course, please leave your comments down below. In fact, if you're still watching um, and you found something valuable in this video, like that one golden nugget, leave that as your comment down below because I want to know then what you guys um, are learning from these videos. And with that being said then, let's get into announcing the winner of the previous video. So here we are then guys on the previous video. Um, in this one then, I showed you three products that each made over 10,000 US dollars profit. So if you haven't watched the video yet, make sure you go and check it out. Um, so Anyway, let's get into announcing the winner. I'm just gonna take the URL in the top left, head over to the random comment picker, get YouTube comments. We had 42 comments, which is absolutely awesome. So thank you very much. And the winner then of the previous video is Keem Lam. Um, um, apologies if I didn't pronounce your name right. Make sure you hit me up on Instagram then and we can get that call arranged. And guys, if you wanna stop trying your luck and you've been commenting on every single video and you just haven't won it, then I'm sorry about that. But if you just wanna get straight down to business and book a call right away, you can actually do so. Just make sure you check out the video description um, where all the links are there below. And with that being said then guys, thank you very much again for watching and I'll see you tomorrow.